Yo, what is up everybody? Uh, AK back again, but this time with a, a different kind of tutorial. I uh, wanted to show you guys uh, Beginner's Guide to Speedrunning Castlevania for the NES. Um, you know, some I, I got some friends who are just getting into it, and I know some of you guys see us on Twitch, or on speedrun.com, or on YouTube, and you're like, oh man, they make it look so easy, I can never do it, right? Well, there's videos on my YouTube channel of me getting 16 minute PBs on this game, which is considered, you know, not very good, but when you're first starting out, you have to start somewhere. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, what I wanted to do is make this uh, video to help you guys out and uh, to get you started if you are interested in speedrunning Castlevania. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We're going to do a reset. Uh, you don't want to start from the video like that. But uh, anyways, first off, we're just going to talk about a few things. Basically, moving. Uh, the idea is to keep moving uh, forward as much as possible, right? Uh, so every time you jump and whip, you could be potentially losing frames if you whip at the wrong time. Um, you wanna if you if you're gonna jump and whip, which we're gonna have to at some points. Um, you wanna whip immediately upon jumping. Uh, that way, you don't lose any frames. Like jump whip. You can see my controller input down there at the bottom. Jump whip. Jump whip. Now, if you do it this way, uh, you won't be losing any frames uh, when you when you whip in the air. If you were to stall and then whip uh, after you jump, you, you see he stops a little bit before he moves forward. Uh, you might be like, well, Fodic, that's only like, what, 0.2 of a second or something. Yeah, but you do that, you know, 40, 50 times over a course of a run, that adds up, and that's, that's time loss. So just make sure when you're moving about, uh, just uh, jump immediately or whip immediately upon jumping the jump whip strap We'll need that later on to remember that because uh, at one point of this run It is very important that we don't lose any frames um, But let's go ahead and reset now that we talked about that I mean that's the basic movement movement uh, technique in this game is uh, just walking as much as possible and then jump whipping Now there is something else. We'll talk about a little later but as for now, we're just going to go. Uh, this door coming up, you want to jump into it. You don't want to walk into it. Uh, so when you, when you get to about right here, just jump and go into it. That's actually going to be about a second quicker than if you were to uh, just walk into the door. I didn't make a save state here. Let me, let me see where I'm at on my save states real quick. Uh, I think I have a bad one we can use. Yeah, here we go. We'll use zero to just demonstrate and talk about individual things instead of some of the more key save states I have for uh, individual topics. Alright, so coming up here, uh, remember, like if we were to walk in this door, this is see how he slows down a bit when he enters the door? He slows down and he has to walk in. If you jump in, you actually save about a second. See? How I just enter the door pretty much immediately without that slowing down. So you want to do that. There's another door later on. There's only two doors like this you want to jump into. This one and one on the very last level. We'll get to that. Uh, here, uh, some people like to whip the first two zombies and jump over the third. If you get the three, there's, there's many patterns you can get here. I myself, I like to damage boost off the middle zombie and then just keep going. Uh, you do lose a frame or two by doing that, but for me, it's, it's just safer and easier. Uh, see, like this time we didn't get it. You want to pick up, you want to pick up your short whip uh, right here in the beginning off of one of these candles. You can get it without losing any frames using the jump whip strap. Uh, strap. Now these black panthers, you want to just jump over them when they get close to you. Uh, right there, it's actually quicker to damage boost off of that zombie than it is to uh, take the time to stop him whipping. So if you get that zombie spawn, don't freak out. Just just walk through them. Let's just go back through and look at uh, this first little area again. 
Uh, this is going to be a pretty in-depth uh, beginner's guide. I, I, I like to be thorough with my videos. I don't like to, you know, give you guys half information or anything. So I like to go all out. So it could be like an hour-long video or something. But we'll see. Um, so, oh, I didn't get the whip there. That's fine. You guys get the whip. I'll, I'll get it up here. <laughs> Now I do have a state for this room because we're going to talk about this here. Let me find it. There it is. Alright, so uh, this is the next little area. I just entered that door back there and this is it. Now the key here, okay, uh, we can manipulate a stopwatch drop by standing on the right pixel. What pixel is that? It's not that one. Um, <laughs> I do miss it sometimes myself. I, uh, I do know where it is, but sometimes it's just hard for me to get on it. Mm, that could be it. Basically, now I look a little short, but basically, uh, the block, the two blocks that my um, furthest most uh, foot is, I want that to be split in half. Basically, that foot, you want to split it in half with that line in between the two blocks now you don't have to do this uh, we'll show you a backup strat if you don't want to do this you can just go down and get the axe and be okay but um, I know some of you guys are going to want to be doing the back crit or at least trying for it and if you don't get it uh, this uh, getting this stopwatch manipulation will help you get the the backup strat for the crit when you do miss it so uh, what we want to do let's see if I can get on it Uh, there we go. You see how my foot is half split right in the middle of that block? I'm probably going to get a stopwatch drop. Now, you could potentially get a holy water drop, but don't freak out. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just uh, that is frame dependent when you started the game. So sometimes you may get a holy water uh, instead. So but most of the time you'll get a stopwatch. Now, I didn't get anything because probably because I paused it. There we go. So we got the stopwatch. Hooray! All right. Uh, the f now this is really the first thing uh, most people learn what we're about to discuss um, when they uh, start speedrunning Castlevania. It was actually my first uh, speedrun trick for the NES I ever learned. Uh, is the bat skip? Uh, instead of going down here and walking around and going all through here, uh, we go across the top up there. So. I'm gonna get the stopwatch and then save it. See, it's a little picky, so it, it's harder for me to pixel walk on this than it is for like Mega Man or something. All right. So, see how we made it across? Now let me now let me explain it a little bit. Uh, when that bat is right about the middle, there's those two blacked out windows in the back. When that bat is right about in the middle where that gray line separates, that's when you want to be damage boosting off the bat to make it over. Um, that is going to be your, your time frame. Uh, there's an easy way to kind of time this out. You don't have to visually look at it. What I generally do is when I see the bat coming, I turn around and I go. But I, I overshot that one because I was explaining. But see the bat turn around and go and that'll usually almost 90 95 percent of the time get you over with that little that little strat turn around go turn around go well like 95 percent of the time turn around go i was a little bit too far back on that one i was late on that one i'm just messing it up now because i'm trying to explain it but um this will definitely help you turn around and go man I you guys probably don't believe me but <laughs> it's it's cuz this weird save state I made but it's all good yeah let's go back and uh, let's just do it uh, all in fluid motion now because that save state uh, there's a little pause in there so it's making the bat come out a little later than it should be and uh, it's messing it up but trust me guys if you don't believe me you can go to speedrun.com look at my profile 
Uh, I have a sub 12 in this game, which is a very good time by anyone's standard. Uh, so. Let's get a stopwatch for us. There we go. Alright, let's see if we can get it. Nope. I'm just goofing it up here. Worst worst tutorial guy ever, right? But, Oh, let me lean back to you. I got my fan like right in front of my face, so. Sorry if you can hear that. Man, wow guys. Don't, don't be like me and actually, and actually practice the game a little bit. <laughs> go see up and over it's easy peasy really I'm just goofing it up we got a really low bat just in so it happens sometimes but Sweet. Now, moving on. We're going to save it right here. Uh, so this part is for people people that want to do the back crit. Uh, if you don't want to do the back crit, you can skip ahead till you see me getting the axe. And uh, I'll explain the axe strats. Uh, but this part right here is for people that want to do the back crit. And it all starts when you enter this door. Uh, once you come into here, it is very important that we don't lose any frames. Excuse me. So what we want to do is we want to be holding right already. See, I'm holding right on the controller, so he walks it automatically on the first frame. And then it's going to look like this to get the right setup. You don't want to get that hard. <laughs> But, uh, alright, so jump off, jump over the zombie, don't whip the zombie, okay? If you whip that zombie, you're gonna lose frames, so then you won't get the right manipulation. So jump, jump, jump. Jump, jump, jump whip, get the invis pot, and then fall off. You wanna walk off, not jump off, you wanna walk off. Jump, 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 jump. Walk off. Now we have the proper manipulation uh, for to get the fast bat uh, it's going to give us the same bat pattern every time and that's how we're going to be able to time out our bat crit Let's show you guys each time i do this i'm going to show you guys uh, the examples a few times in a row and uh i encourage you when you're at home and you're practicing to make save states but you have to make appropriate save states you can't just come in here and be like okay let me save it now and then go make it in the doorways like when you can that way you're not losing any frames <clears throat> all right so be walking holding right jump off jump up jump whip jump up well I missed it that time uh, I was a little late jump off jump jump whip jump if you don't jump you're gonna miss that that uh, invincibility pot jump 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 now we got it we're good to go we can we can fall through that last zombie without getting knocked back so we didn't get the crit but we got the backup um, strap now let's actually I think I have one set up for the crit as well
Okay. So yeah, three, no, two and six is what we're on right now. So let me go through here and explain a little more. Okay, so once you get that part down, you're, you're good to move forward. You want to jump up right here. And uh, of course you won't, don't want to pause. But once you come up, uh, once you get up, you want to stop where your head uh, hits that window right there. Now this is where everybody's a little different. Uh, my technique, I have a uh, button uh, buffer that I like to do. And I actually say it out loud a lot because it helps me time it. Uh, I like to go, uh, when you're on the stairs, you can't, um, you can't jump. So I like to uh, use the jump button as a buffer button. And then um, it helps me keep time. So what I do is, let's go back and do this. I'll just show you in full time and then I'll break it down a little more. One, two, one, two, go. No crit, but that's okay. Okay, so uh, what I do is I jump up, I, I pause, I press, I do one, two, move up, one, two, move up. So let's do it in full speed. One, two, one, two, go. One, two, one, two, go. One, two, one, two, go. Now I'm not the best at getting the crit. This is not going to work every time anyways. Well, only the real top top guys can get this with, with good efficiency because to, to cause this crit <clears throat> you need to be dealing damage to the bat on the same frame he is dealing damage to you that is the same crit system that we're going to use throughout the whole game uh, that means you got one sixtieth of a second to hit this bat at the same time it hits you so it is you know it is pretty tight I wouldn't suggest back crit for everybody, especially most of you guys just beginning. We'll go through the axe strats in just a moment. But uh, anyways, uh, now there is there is also a vi uh, visual cue you could use. Um, let me see. So you see where the bat is now. Uh, once the right side of his head, from our perspective, so the right side... Uh, it's actually the left side of his head, <clears throat> but from our perspective, it's his right. Once the right side of his head reaches, there's that checkerboard looking area of the pillar in the background. Um, on the far right of the pillar, where or the, where it's like a chessboard looking kind of white, black, white, black, white, black. Uh, and once he gets there, like, um, let's, let's slow it down. Let's see. A little slow right <laughs> but I want to be able to catch it do, do, do. so it's right about in there in between those two pauses I just did uh, that is the visual cue a lot of people look for uh, once his head gets right there that's when you want to whip <laughs> didn't get him but that's okay uh, as for me I don't do very well with the visual cube but there it is for some of you guys if you want it one two one two go one two one two go it'd be cool if I could get one at least one two one two go there we go One, two, one, two, go. Now, if you don't get it, one, two, one, two, go. Use your stopwatch and then just get up there and work on. One, two, one, two, go. If 
if you're whipping slow, you're probably going to end up with one hit. You just jump over and get him like that. One, two, one, two, go. One, two, one, two, go. I, uh, my timing is really off right now. I do I do normally get it. I would say with probably 40% accuracy, but uh, as we saw the bat skip and the bat crit right now, I am just not on my tricks this evening. But one, two, one, two, go. But this is why you want the stopwatch. In case you do miss it, you can just simply freeze him and uh, beat him up. One, two, one, two, go. And on the backup, when you want to try and use the stopwatch once the bat is completely beyond you and toward the door. Uh, if you if you were to do it earlier, well, it's kind of hard for me to actually do that. But. See what happens if you move up too far? You don't get the bat, the right bat movement. So you want to stop where your head's at, move up, go. See, uh, now the bat can actually hit me in it, and then I'll have to get this big heart, try to get him again when he comes at me, and that's just too much time. Like, we don't want that. See, that's bad. What you want to do if you miss it, you want to get him right when he's at the door, like that. Boom, 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 boom. And like I said, the back crit, the, the back crit isn't something you should be learning right in the beginning. But I told you guys I wanted to be thorough, so you can go back once you get comfortable with the game, doing the easier tricks. You can, um, you can come back to the same tutorial and do some of these harder tricks like the back crit. But now let's go back and let's say you don't want to worry about the back crit at all. Don't worry, there's an X uh, strat that we can do that's really simple. You want to make sure you have at least seven, excuse me, seven hearts. You don't want, you don't want like nine or ten because we don't want to get the long whip. We want to keep short whip pretty much the whole game until later on. Uh, now, so get seven hearts. doesn't matter if this happens you, it doesn't matter you don't need to worry about the frame perfect manipulation uh, there there will always be an axe here in this candle All right so we got our seven now right here what you want to do is you want to jump over and walk into this block until you see the bat come down once he starts coming down we want to break the block and grab the two that's in there what this is going to do is it's going to make the bat stay in position uh, for us to be able to axe him. Uh, if you go up here and do it quickly, uh, the bat will probably swoop pretty quickly. Not all the time, as you can see, but um, you want to wait until he starts to drop to break the block, get the two, then start throwing some axes. Now, when the, when the bat gets like right here, if you throw an axe, you're going to get a crit from the candle and on the bat because uh, you're doing damage to the candle and the bat on the same frame it's not gonna kill the bat in one hit but it's gonna do double the damage you would from one axe if you're if you didn't do this you would need eight axes to kill the bat doing it this way you only need seven uh, so walk jump over walk into the block break the block start throwing axes once you see him start swooping wait and he's done You don't have to wait. I just did that for example. Sometimes he'll swoop faster, and then you just still you just launch axes at him. That candle crit really helps out though. Break the block, start throwing axes. Now you can see, uh, normally I'm doing two bars of damage versus the bat with one axe. Right here, I should do four bars. Well, it's because I paused it. Hold on. See, I broke it early. Now the bat went too high. I can't even hit him. So walk into it till you start seeing him. Break it. Go. Alright, so I left the bat with four bars of health on purpose. We got one axe left. Now normally, like I said, you only get two bars per one axe. 
So we wouldn't be able to kill him right here unless we do the crit. Boom. Well, I keep missing it when I'm trying to explain it. There, there was a crit, did four bars of damage. Boom. And that's gonna be the easy backup strat. Uh, the non-crit strat that you can go with. <clears throat> Alright, so on to level two guys. Now if you have if you have the axe here, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the axe route versus the clock route. Uh, and then both routes kind of meet up on the third level. So first we'll start with the axe uh, strats and then we'll go back and discuss the stopwatch strats. So uh, if you got if you got the stopwatch here, I mean the axe here, first thing you want to do is get this cross that's above you. Just jump up, get the cross. Now remember this is a beginner's guide so we we may not do the same things that, that you guys see you're like why why'd you just do that this is for your beginners uh, but with some thorough explanation of some of the harder tricks so if you do want to learn them they're there so jump up throw your axe what that's doing is it's getting you the cross but it's also doing one damage to that knight there who has two hp so now when we go up here and throw the cross it's going to kill the bat and the knight uh, if we didn't do that, let's say we went up here and we just jumped and got it, huh? And then we threw it. Uh, it does not, well, it did kill the guy. Yeah, but... uh, where I, I think I'm actually doing crit damage to him. See, see how I didn't kill him in one that time? I didn't do a crit with the bat at the same time. Um... So jump up, throw the axe, get the cross, jump and throw a cross. Boom, you're good in this room. Boom, boom, it's my my um, catchphrase. Now, <laughs> up here, um, you're going to have to jump over that bat that's coming towards you. Uh, he's going to swoop down, but there's a good visual cue you can use. Pretty much, uh, there's that red line in the background. I'll show you. Uh, right up, if you look toward the top where the candle is and then you start to go down in the in the gray blocks right above Simon we're, we're looking on a vertical line above Simon right now there's that red line in those dark area of the gray blocks that's where your visual cue to, to jump is and I myself actually take a little pause before I jump to make sure I don't hit the bat on the wrong if you do hit the bat at least you get you want the damage boost to knock you over that way so we'll get the cross and we'll go good in this room now right here we're gonna wanna go stall boom boom So maybe it's a little further than this is about where you trigger the bat at. So take a little pause, jump forward, go, and you're good to go. This guy you just jump over. As long as you don't whip, he's not gonna turn around. You can just jump over. Let's let's show what happens if I do whip. He turns around and, and it gets really hairy in there. As long as you don't whip, uh, he's not gonna turn on you. If I'm going through here whipping, he's going to be turning all over the place, and he's going to be out of place. But if I just do, uh, you know, st stay uh, vigilant and, and trust the routing, you just jump right over everything. Don't freak out and think you have to start whipping. Alright, so this room with the cross, we're going to want to pick up the dagger, actually. Uh, just jump over that Medusa head. Get the dagger. It's in the blue window. Well, I guess it's just the sky, but the little square window up there. So jump over this Medusa head at the last minute, pretty much. And uh, then you don't have to worry about the second one. So we got the dagger, and we only want to keep about four hearts.
uh, right here, you want to jump up. And then jump, jump, so you can clear that guy. Jump, jump, jump. Here we want to take a slight pause toward the end of the block and then we can jump over the Medusa. Okay, let's go back through and show that a little bit better. Pause. Oops. <laughs> I was trying to save state it and I just walked off in doing so. So walk toward the edge, stop, and fall off. Walk toward the edge, stop, and jump over and you're good to go. Now this one you just wait for him to get to you and just jump up. Stop and go. Wait, jump. Stop and go. Wait and jump. Stop and go. Wait and jump. Now that's that's pretty easy peasy. It's pretty it's impressive to people that that they're like, wow, you can boost up there. <laughs> but it's pretty pretty easy. Um, so easy peasy right through here. Now coming up. Uh, is the next room with the crushers, the Beverly crushers. All right here, uh, I like to jump when I get to the split in between these last two blocks. Excuse me. Because you jump right over that Medusa head and you don't have to worry about it. Right here. Alright, so you want to jump off. Now, let me explain that real quick. Anytime you can jump off instead of walking off, you want to do so because when you land on blocks that are high up, you, uh, and anytime you actually walk off a ledge that you, you could have jumped off of, you're losing frames. So any ledge you can jump off of, uh, like here we can't because we'll get hung up in the blocks. But this one we can jump off of, so jump off. Any any ledge you can jump off of instead of walking off of, do so. Alright, so this is the crusher. It's pretty annoying until you learn it. Because that can happen. But there is a way to get through here, with, even without the stopwatch. Uh, there is a buffer strat you can use, so let's discuss that. So what you want to do is walk, walk off, jump off. Right here you want to stall. Go up here, whip, and then jump, throw a dagger. And get crushed, apparently. <laughs> so, jump off, stall, whip, jump, throw a dagger. And that is how you get up under there without any troubles. Let's do it again. Jump off. One, two, go. One, two, go. Here, jump, jump. Throw a holy water and you can just walk on to the end. Jump, jump. Throw a holy water. You're good to go. This guy shoots fireballs at you, just jump over. Now here, uh, since we hit that bone pillar with the holy water, our, our holy water count for hitting enemies was stacking up. Uh, and it is how many times you hit an enemy is when you're going to get a multiplier. So since we used that holy water to get through that bone pillar, it also doubles up for us in getting hit counts for the holy water so we can get a multiplier. So what we want to do is just turn around, whip, boom, got a two. And which we want for Medusa. 
uh, get this big heart and you guys should probably only you guys should keep four I usually go for three but we'll keep four right now just whip 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 you know easy easy stuff grab your two and and you don't have to worry about these Medusa heads you can just as long as you're going forward you don't have to worry about them See, this is what can happen, like, it, it, this is like a normal Medusa fight, right? This is really slow. So we want to use the strat for the Medusa fight. And I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. Touch this door and turn around, and once you get right back here, that's when you want to throw your holy water. So walk all the way to the door. Touch it. Turn around right here. Now throw. Touch the door. Turn around. Throw. Uh, when you're first starting out, I would suggest you not jump for any of the orbs uh, at the end of the levels. Uh, unless you're doing it 100% right, you're actually losing time. So, one, two, three, throw. Oh, I missed that throw. Touch the door, throw. One, two, throw. One, two. One, two, three, four. You can actually get three hits uh, per cycle. That why well, I only need three instead of four holy water. So let's just do that. One, two, three, throw. One, two, three, throw. One, two, three. And that's gonna be the that the extracts for this level. Now let's go back and let's take. I have to get the uh, staff watch. Let's go back and take a look at that stage with the stopwatch. Once again, I do apologize about my fan running in the background, but it's pretty warm in here, so just bear bear with. Alright, let's uh, do it again. One, two, one, two, go. Just not got good completion of my tricks tonight, but it's all good. Die, monster. The reason being is I don't actually use the A button, but. If you guys are playing with an NES controller, you only have to. I, I use the B button on an Xbox 360 controller as my buffer. But anyways, um, so here, easy peasy, just go up the stairs. When you jump, use your stopwatch. I mean, that's, that's simple enough, right? <laughs> you go up the stairs. When you jump, use your stopwatch. And uh, you can be a little fancy. Let's try to be fancy about it. Nope. <laughs> this is frame perfect so there we go did the backwards jump uh, same thing here as the other way uh, but some of you guys might have skipped ahead so I'll explain it again once you get here a little stall and then jump over the bat so once you get to the line stall jump over the bat and then just keep jumping when necessary. This guy won't turn around and get you, so just jump on over. Jump on over. Now, same thing for this room. Wait till the last minute pretty much, jump over that Medusa head, you're good. We do not want to get the dagger, leave it be. Right here, you want to jump up, jump again, and jump again. That way you clear the night, okay? So three jumps right there. Now this time we want to get that big heart candle. That is the one, not the one, the next one, but the uh, second one. 
It's always going to be a big heart. That's going to give us five hearts so we can use our um, stopwatch. But we really need six hearts. So you want to get that one. Really, um, you want to be searching for that small heart the whole time once you enter this next door. Because that big heart's going to be there, but the small heart drops are RNG. So. So I'm going to make sure I clear the Medusa head and then I'm going to be looking for a small heart. You don't want to turn around and pick up those hearts. So we got six, we're good to go. Now all we need to do is stop, jump over, wait, and jump. Stop, jump over, wait, and jump. And then right here you want to jump again so you clear this other Medusa head. Alright, so here we want to jump off, and when we get to about here, we're going to want to jump and use our stopwatch, and you're just, you're good to go. Now you don't want to come up here and clip the block and then go, because then you're going to die. Even though you can walk through the, the crushers when the, the watch is gone, or when the watch is on, it's going to take you too long. The more you clip the block, the more dangerous it is going to be for you want to actually use it early to make sure you get through there easy peasy guys I'm trying to be thorough uh, and explain stuff in depth because I some of you guys it might this might be your first speedrun game you might not know what a damage boost is or or whatever so I'm trying to be thorough it's gonna be a lengthy video but just bear with me. Alright, so you want to get your two up here. Oh, let me go back and explain because some of you guys might have skipped uh, to the stopwatch part. Alright, so once we get past here, we want to jump. Oh, I was a little early. Jump, jump. Throw your holy water and just go. Jump, jump. Throw your holy water and go. What that's going to do is going to allow us to walk through that bone pillar, but we're also going to be able to get a two multiplier up here because of that. So break this candle. You got your two. Now just walk. The Medusas will fly under you. Grab this big heart here. Touch the door. Walk to here. And then throw. Whip, whip, whip. Throw, whip, whip, whip. throw and go let's make a state up here turn around whoop don't worry about any of the other candles just get this one big one at the end right here touch the door turn around and throw touch the door go to here throw and that's gonna be level two now we go to the worst stage of all as far as speed running which is level three uh, it requires uh, a lot of efficiency uh, on your um, your inputs to actually be well do well but this is where, where everyone's going to have the holy water. There's a few people that like to cross through here, but we're only going to discuss the holy water strats. So if you're watching this beginner video, maybe you went with the axe strats, or, or maybe you went with the stopwatch. Either way, you're going to end up with the holy water here, so we're all back to one now. Alright, the first thing we want to do is we want to jump off and throw a holy water. Now, wasting that holy water is important, so we don't get long whip, because we want to keep short whip. Jump off. Once you get once you get free of that block, you want to jump up and stall, and don't throw your holy water immediately. Throw it when you're close to landing. What that's gonna do is this guy's gonna walk into the fire. So let's take a look at that. Waste, jump and waste the holy water. Keep on going. Now jump, throw holy water. Jump up here, turn around, and go. 
A lot of little things going on. Uh, so let's just look at it again. Walk, 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 jump, throw. Here we want to jump up, turn around, and wait for that guy. And when you uh, when you land, you want to throw holy water and get that big heart. So now you should have seven hearts at this point. All right, here you just want to go toward the edge, throw a holy water, and you want to whip. All right, let me explain the whipping before landing. If you see, uh, if you jump off high enough, if you're high enough and you jump off, Simon's going to crouch when he lands before you can move forward. You can negate this by whipping, so what we do is we throw a holy water whip, and now we don't do the crouch animation. Alright, so let's go through this the easy way. Jump over, walk up the steps, eat that bird, and then throw a holy water. You can wait, make sure the guy the skeleton dies. Now you, you want to get that X, now you got your X, so let's look at that again. This is the easy way to get through this room. Walk up, eat that bird, throw, throw a holy water. If you walk too far, you will hit the bird and get knocked back into the hole. Walk up. Ba, 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 ba. Eat that bird. So that's the easy way. Let's look at the the more efficient way, but a little more uh, difficult. Jump whip, throw a holy water, jump up, throw a holy water, jump whip. It, it depends on, you can get many patterns from the birds there. There's either, there's, well, two, two patterns. Uh, that was one of them. That's kind of the abnormal pattern. Let's see if we can get a more normal one. You want you want to wait till you really can the last moment to jump and throw that holy water. If you jump early and throw it, the bird's probably not going to come down in the right spot. See? Now, I've I've done uh, probably about 2,500 attempts of this game, so um, you know I can get out of some tricky spots. You know, kind of seen. A lot of different things that can happen and the more practice you guys do the more you'll be able to do it as well uh, so jump over throw a holy water jump up throw a holy water and go let's do it again throw go whip throw a holy water jump up throw a holy water throw a holy water and go there again, we want to land and whip close to the time we're landing so we don't take that crouch animation and lose time. If you if that top raven uh, crow decides to not come down, you're going to have to throw your holy water and then jump up and whip him, whip him just like I just did. Uh, that is the second pattern that you can get. Sweet. Alright, so we got, you really want four axes, or four hearts here, so I'm going to waste a couple. And then once we get up here, we want to get the cross from this candle. Watch out for the bone. Now here, we want to save it because we're going to talk about this. Get that. Oh, no, 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 don't get that. I'm sorry. Once you get past that, throw, jump and throw your cross. So once we get past it, jump and throw your cross. That's going to kill the crow and drop the big heart for us. So now I'm going to explain the easy way. I'm going to explain three different ways to do this. So jump, throw your cross after the stopwatch. Because if you throw it before, you're going to drop the stopwatch. And then even if you jump over it, that's going to make that be a little heart and not a big heart. So you don't want to break that candle. 
So after you cross it, throw. Easy way, just just kill it, guys. <laughs> uh, when you're just starting out, you know it might it is slow, but it could you know make it easier for you. This one you can just jump over without killing, right? I'm sorry, I was showing you guys the kill method, which is just six whips. Boom, boom. Alright, now this is the second method. It's still somewhat safe, but uh, it's a little slower than the fastest method. Um, this one, we're gonna want to intentionally damage boost to offer the thing, and then go. I didn't throw my cross when I landed, but uh, you want to hit. You want to make sure you're hitting halfway on the right side. Well, I critted it that time. You want to hit it on the halfway on the right side. Because if you hit it in the middle, you're going to fall in the hole like that. So you want to make sure you're hitting it on the right side. If I don't do it in tandem, I, I get all out of whack. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? If we always got an invincibility potion there. <laughs> There it is, throw a cross and you're good to go. Well, we got bad RNG, but normally 90% of the time that's gonna work out. There we go, see? Jump, whip, jump. Jump. And that's the second method of getting through. We'll do it one more time. Well, I actually made the jump that time. <laughs> Now, uh, let's say you do make that jump, and you don't know what to do from there. Uh, you can intentionally take a damage boost off of the bone pillar, and it'll knock you over. You don't have to worry about turning around and jumping if you don't want to. But there we go. Alright, so let's try to do the tricky one, which is jumping over. This is the fastest way, but it's, it's definitely tricky. I was a little late. Uh, I didn't catch the raven, but... Uh, there is a visual cue I use for this. About right here, when your foot, when the black outline of the castle in the background meets the the kind of darker light blue of the railing, uh, that is when you can jump over and you'll make it. So let's try it. Uh, nope. <laughs> Now, that is one of the trickiest things about this level, and uh, so, you know, there was three different methods of doing it, um, you know, work on which one's better for you, maybe start with the easiest one for a while, there's just killing, and then go to the damage boost, and then work your way to the jump, um, you know, you, you can't, you're not going to start off and be a world record holder, guys, you know. Everybody who who holds a world record in any game, you know, they, they definitely put work in and practice So don't don't feel bad that you're like not doing the best tricks right off the bat You got to work your way up All right now stage nine is pain in the, in the butt, but uh Let's uh, take a look at it. Let's actually go back and get a proper save state
All right, so here, uh, this this room can be a pain in the butt, but once you get used to it, it's really not. All right, so first thing we want to whip the two first crows, jump over, whip, and jump and throw across. So let's do it. Whip, whip, jump over, whip, throw across, and jump again. Now you want to make sure you're jumping because sometimes as you saw that bird can either go high or low. If he goes high, he's going to get hit by the cross. If he goes low, we're going to jump over him. So whip. Well, I was a little late. Whip. Whip. Jump over. Whip. Alright. Whip, 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 cross, whip. I was a little late on that save state, that's why I was weird. When you land this time, once you jump over this one and land, you want to throw your cross when you land. What that's going to do is that cross is going to protect your back now. Kind of made a goofy save state here. This is why I'm telling you guys make proper save states. See how that cross took out that fireball for me? I don't have to worry about it. Just make sure you're jumping over the cross. If you don't clear the cross, like let's say we, we, we got it. Now there's fireballs and all kinds of mess. Just clear the cross. Easy peasy, guys. That's that second skeleton. For some reason, he will not get hit by your cross. Even if you were to throw it pretty well and time it well, it, you need to whip, uh, whip him. So as you're jumping across back there, make sure you whip him. Here. Uh, you want to jump and when you land you want to throw your cross well I did it wrong but anyway let's go back and show it right so jump over throw a cross you're gonna get a two drop and we want that too for the crit jump over throw a cross you're gonna get your two Sweet. All right, so here is the mummy fight. Now the mummies, uh, if they can be a pain as well, but once you figure them out, they are easy as pie. I don't know if pie is actually easy, but it's a saying, so we're using it. Um, jump off. Let's just show actually what a regular mummy fight could look like with no strats. I'm not even gonna pick up the meat. So you're going back and forth. You got them all over the place. You know, you might throw a crop. Well, I. Rid of them, <laughs> but uh, you know they're they're based on which way you're facing. Uh, like I turn, I can I can make them turn. Now the the strat here is what we want to do is we want to break this meat block right here, and then once we get the meat, we want to stand under this block here, and we want to face the right. Uh, like I said, the, their movements are dependent on which way you are facing, so you want to face the right so this leftmost mummy starts walking toward the other mummy. So get your meat. Oh. Get your meat, get under the block, and face right. Get your meat, get under the block, face right. Wait for them to get close together and throw across. You don't have to chase them down like I do. Uh, that You could just stay under here the whole time. When, whenever you chase them down like that, you're cutting down on the flight path time of the cross. So you're saving time. But it's not necessary. So get your meat. Get under the block and wait. Wait. 
And one thing we haven't discussed yet, but you want to try to end each level with zero hearts. Uh, the, every heart you have is 0.1 second. Plus, that little there's a little time in between, probably about half a second, before it actually starts to count down your hearts. Even if they separate and you don't get the crit, this is going to help you out a lot. So jump over, get your meat, get under the block. Good to go, fellas. Just practice that, and I promise you, the Brendan Fraser bros, as they're known around my stream, uh, are going to be easy peasy. And then we're going to move on, and we will discuss the uh, cave skip, but this is one of the more advanced tricks, uh, so you don't need to worry about this. Of that. Luckily, I came prepared. <laughs> so when you fall, you wanna when you land, you wanna whip three times. Whip, whip, whip. That's gonna get you in the right cycle, and then just move forward. Whip, wait. Whip, whip, whip. Get this big heart. Get the stopwatch. Jump. Get this big heart. That was low bat, but I was just that was the motion I was showing you now. I could tell it was a low bat before I even went for it. Now one wait. What I like to do is actually I start whipping as I'm in the falling screen before we even land. And then once I land I stop and then I start whipping again. Three whips, grab the big heart, grab the stopwatch, grab the big heart. Now right here, uh, we want to hit the second candle. Now what that's gonna do, since we have fifteen hearts we want to uh that would drop a long whip but we don't want long whip so you want to uh kind of hit it uh once you would go under the long whip instead of getting it see now we're under it now uh that merman uh, that he is actually important to this whole thing um, you want to get him let, let's go back and try to show you guys the right position That's a little too high, but that's really close. You you want that merman's feet to be right above the flames of the candle. That is a tad bit too high, maybe one or two, maybe three pixels in there. Pro, yeah, definitely like three, three or five pixels, not one. But uh, um, you want them to be right over that candle. Let's see if we can get it. That's a little too low. We kind of want to be in between the two that we just did. It's kind of hard for me to do it in the speed like this. There we go. That looks pretty good. That's what you're looking for. Jump, jump. I still got a bad bat, but it's probably because we were loading state and all that. Doing all this messes with manipulation, so... Jump, jump, use your holy water here. That's going to freeze the bat, and also um, you're going to whip at the same time for the holy water because we want the holy water. There we 
And then you just damage boost off the bat, and now you're in the, the cave. This is why it's called the cave skip. So if you if you get the bat, if you get the merman in the wrong spot, you can use a you can use a pause buffer like that, uh, and sometimes it'll it'll work itself out. That you'll know once you do this a few times. You'll know if you got a bat you can try it off of. Like that, that's a good bat. I just missed it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good bat. Here you want to throw a holy water. Jump, 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 fall. Now you have to learn the right movements in there or you're going to miss that platform every time. save it uh, so let's just clear it clear out and walk through here uh, see there's these down there's like these lows down in here uh, you can't really see them until you know what you're looking for there's these like darker kind of peach orange color whatever it is um, those are actually the where the lines are but what we want to do is just throw a holy water once we get down here and you want to jump over this one because if you walk under that one, you're not going to make it. You are not going to make it. Holy water. Jump. Boom. Okay, so holy water. Oops, holy water once you're on the bottom. Or whip, I guess. Let's see if whip will count. Yeah, whip is fine. Right here, you want to get this big heart. And then you want to throw a holy water at this candle so you get long whip. Now that we've done cave skip, because there is a way to do cave skip with only the short, the with the long whip, but I don't know how to do it, and it's, it's just unnecessary to try and do it. Um, so once you do cave skip or if you decide you're not doing cave skip you can go ahead and get along with it doesn't matter but if you're going for cave skip once you do it you can your goal is to get along with before uh flea man alley which we're heading to right now now to, in order to get along with you need uh eight or more hearts so as you can see once we do this we only got four hearts well there is a big heart right here and you're gonna have to throw a holy water to get this candle draft. And now we have long whip. Uh, let's see. Let's just go back. Do I have a? Okay. Well, let's just take a rip. I'm just gonna go under, like uh, you know, naturally without doing cave skip. Here, you could use stopwatch if the bat was coming for you. Make sure you're picking up this holy order, guys. Very important. Very, very important. Just kill the bat, jump across, hold down, jump up. Oh, we got an axe, so that doesn't matter, like, during this. But if you get an axe during a run, it's probably a rip. Probably a rip. And that's how you get across uh, without, you know, going through, over the top. It's pretty simple. Now let's load the proper state back. As so we have holy water and long whip here. And welcome to Flea Man Alley, guys. Flea Man Alley. Let's just go through it and show it once. Uh, I wanted. I, we got a backwards flea spawn, and I want the good, the good pattern to show you guys.
and that is Sweet Man Alley. Now, first let's discuss an easy way of doing this without knowing the, the perfect pattern and all that and getting through. Uh, the easy way is simply, you only lose about four seconds total doing this. Let them drop and whip. Let them drop, whip. Let them drop, whip. You want to jump over it because they can drop an axe and the axe is a run killer. If you get one from behind you like that, just throw a holy water and he'll run into it. So let's do that again. Oh wow, we got all three of them behind us, that's great. <laughs> when you get up to this bone dragon up here, you want to throw a holy water at him. So you're stacking your uh, hits that you need for a multiplier. I think I missed him, but it's okay. <laughs> So this is the easy way of getting through here. Like I said, you only lose about four seconds. So as a beginner, you shouldn't be too worried about losing four seconds. You just need to be worried about getting through it quickly. All right, now let's go through the actual pattern and discuss that. Uh, so what I do is I have a couple visual cues. Uh, once I get to the white spot in the middle of this first pillar, I know to jump and throw a holy water like that and then of course like I said you always want to be jumping over these fleas because they could drop an axe and a an axe is a run killer well, jump and then jump whip jump whip well, I went a little earlier let's go back Jump over, jump whip, jump whip, jump whip, jump whip. Walk a few steps till you get into this pillar here in the background, uh, the, like the broken pillar, and then jump and throw a holy water, and then just start the pattern over again. So, holy water, jump whip, jump whip, jump whip, jump whip, throw the holy water. Now you're just back at the beginning of the pattern. And even like you see me, like when when I if I get off on the pattern, I go to the other method. So I don't lose too much time trying to get back to the, the good pattern. Alright, let's do it right. Let's do it right. Jump with or <laughs> holy water first. Holy water. Jump whip, jump whip, jump whip. I was a little late on that one. Holy water. Jump whip, jump whip, jump whip, jump whip. Now, once we're inside this, you want to jump, throw a holy water. Jump whip, jump whip, jump whip, jump whip. Throw your holy water at this guy. This will take you a while to get used to. Uh, this is probably the second uh, thing you'll probably practice the most is Flea Man Alley. Let's see if I still get a two here. Probably. I, sh I think I should. Yeah. Alright, so now let's explain this little area. There's a couple of methods of getting through here. You want to hit the third candle so you get your multiplier. Now here's, here, I'm going to discuss the easy way first and then the other way is not very hard, but the, other, the first way is just a lot safer. Especially, okay, uh, 
the bone dragons do four bars of damage so if you're only down to four bars here you're gonna need to be very safe and get this meat there's a meat behind this bone dragon this is an easy way to get through this and get that meat so jump and get your your multiplier once you see the bone dragon throw a holy water and just whip him he'll be dead and then there's a meat right here once you see him throw your holy water boom 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 get your meat and go It's going to take four whips. This one, um, you just kind of go and hope he gives you the right thing like that. It will be best. Right now let's discuss the method that I use during my runs. Um, I do the same thing. I get the holy water multiplier. I get the third candle. And then I do a whip buffer right here. Once you see him, you whip, and then you can uh, jump, jump. You don't actually try to hit him though. Whip, I uh, hit him again, but I made it through. Wait, maybe I normally do hit him. Yeah, you just hit him and jump over. Yeah. So whip and jump over. Now here this is probably going to give us the tall, the hide bone dragon. You just jump through him, he'll knock you down and you keep going. You can take a little stall right here and I think he'll probably go down normally. Yep. You only should do that if you're low on health though, because you're losing some time there. Alright, so uh, coming into this fight, doing my method, there's a, another method that's slightly faster. We're going to want at least three holy waters. Three holy waters coming into this fight. Uh, what you do is you get up here, you throw it, whip, throw it, whip, 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 throw it, whip out. So each time you do it, you're going to increase the amount of, of whips in between two, three, and then just whip until he's dead. Throw a holy water, two. Oh, I'm too far back. <laughs> Need to walk up far enough so you're actually hitting him. One, two. Oh, I did it again. One, two, throw a holy water, one, two, three, throw a holy water, whip out. Throw a holy water, one, two, throw a holy water, one, two, three, throw a holy water, one, two, three, whip out. Easy peasy, guys. That fight is not easy at all without holy water, though. It is a pain, and that is why getting an axe during Fleeman Alley is a run killer. Now we're coming up to a pretty easy stage once you get used to it. So as soon as you start, you want to jump and walk a little bit, but then jump and throw a holy water. And these flea men will jump into it. You want to jump and hit that uh, bone uh, skeleton now if if for some reason you uh, get a stopwatch drop or a dagger drop uh, there's always a holy water in this candle it won't be because I have one already but if I didn't have one that will always be a holy water now holy water is very important on this level and that, sadly that is the only holy water on the whole level so if, if you lose it probably a rip but here walk up under this block here wait for the flea man and then just boost off of him easy uh, 
pretty much the same thing here. We're gonna jump immediately and whip, and then we're gonna wait for a bone, and then we're gonna go. Now you could get a quick bone, like that, and then you have to jump a little quicker. Uh, you can see me jumping over the enemies I kill because I want to make sure that if they drop a weapon, a sub weapon, I don't get it. Okay, so you want to be careful. Alright, now right here, let's say for instance you didn't have a 3 uh, or even a 2 multiplier. Uh, in this block up here, uh, there's always a multiplier if you need it. It'll be a heart for me since I have the multipliers. Right here, there's a multiplier. This guy, just jump over. These two flea men just walk toward them, under them, and throw a holy water at that red skeleton. That is going to take care of all three of those enemies at one time. Alright, so let's save it here. We'll show this a couple times. Jump. Jump. Walk, walk, walk. Go holy water, jump. Jump, whip, jump, well, I jumped a little early there. And you want to be picking up hearts along the way, so you're going to want to learn which candles to hit and which candles to not hit, because some candles, excuse me, some candles are a dedicated uh, sub-weapon drop, and like I said, uh, having holy water on this level is very important um, Now I actually do have to pee real quick guys So, so I, I don't have um, stuff to cut my, my videos and stuff with so we're just doing it live So give me just a moment and I'll be right back Alrighty, let's turn that down. Good old Castlevania music. And let's get back to it. So remember, jump. Jump, throw a holy water, jump. Alright, so now we got one more flea man to take care of. Now we want to use the same tactic we used on level 3 to throw a late holy water. What is that, what's that going to do for us is the flea man is going to jump over us. Um, if you were to go up here and do it like this. Well, that was weird. Uh, that flea man could drop a, a sub weapon. And then you're going to run into it. And you're going to get uh, the wrong kind of weapon. So we want to jump, throw it late. And you're good to go. Even though I did mess it up a little bit. Let's try and do it again. You want to get that meat. Very important you get that meat. Also, you don't want to stop on the flame uh, all the way in the middle. 
because you can still get that sub weapon. So you want to kind of walk in for, uh, front of it and then get it. All right, so that takes care of that room. Uh, this is the uh, infamous double axe night room, which is very tough to get through normally. Doing it this way, right? Uh, but we have an easy way. Walk to here, wait for the flea man, jump up, jump over. Now you got eye frames to so just go. Walk to the point, jump up, go. Walk to the point, jump up and go. Very easy once you practice it. Here, jump over this skeleton and be picking up hearts along the way. We will get some money bags. But we want we need at least ten hearts later on. Here we want to throw holy water at this guy. Jump and throw a holy water. And then we want to jump immediately again and throw another late holy water. So we hit that red skeleton. Oops. So once I usually once I get to write about the candle is when I jump for this guy and then throw a late one for the red skeleton. I don't really like them pause save states like that. There we go. Got it now, boys. Alright. Throw. Throw. And now throw a late one. If you throw an early one, it's going to catch that block. Or you're going to hit the stairs trying to press up in holy water. See, it caught the block. Now we're going to run into the skeleton. So that's why you want to throw a late one on that skeleton. There's always a big heart drop here, and this will always be a multiplier right here, but since we have a three, it becomes a heart. Uh, now, this uh, Knight Axe, or Axe Knight, you can throw a Holy Water on him. Uh, there is a, a bug in the game that when an enemy is being hit by Holy Water, they cannot do damage to you, and they are completely passable. You can just walk right through them. So this guy... Um, just get up here and throw a holy water at him you can walk right through him now I'm trying to get my hearts up this door right here once you get to here you're gonna want 10 hearts using the method I'm gonna teach you you want to have at least 10 hearts now I have nine so I know in my head I need to pick up one more before I get to the boss fight So this guy, jump, throw, jump, and you can walk through him, throw, you can walk through him, take a damage boost here, if you have the health for it, if you don't have the health for it, you can stop and kill that thing, like this. If you do kill that thing though, you need to wait just a split second because I've gotten a stopwatch from that guy before uh, doing that method and that just ruins everything. So make sure he doesn't drop a, a, an item. Easier up here, you can just jump over the skeleton. There is a meat in this wall, but once you look at this tutorial, uh, you'll learn that this, this hallway is free even though this is the hallway where casual runs go to die. Uh, but let's let's explain it so right here once you get to here you want to jump and throw a holy water and then just jump 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 and throw a holy water jump jump once you get to the first line in the first pillar over here we're not counting the one to the far right because we don't go that way but once you get to the the first line vertical line in the pillar you want to jump throw holy water and then jump jump I was a little late because I paused it to explain it, but let's do it in real time. 
throw, jump, jump. All right, same method up here, except we're gonna use the left vertical line for the, the pillar. So once you see the Axe Knight, and you get to this left vertical line, throw and jump. So now, now we see we have five hearts, you need six right here. So be trying to pick up a heart. And we just got one from here. But let's go back and show that a couple more times. Jump, throw, jump, jump. And for this one, we go to the far end and jump, throw, jump. The left side, jump, go. This, this is a very difficult, very difficult um, hallway if you don't know these little tricks. Alright, now let's talk about the death fight. Death is very difficult if you don't know that uh, Holy Water kind of kicks his butt. Essentially, excuse me, I'm stretching. Uh, essentially, we are going to stun lock him with the holy water while we whip on him. Now the way we do that is is we go until the screen centers like that and then you get in place. And then it just looks like this. Now let's talk about the actual positioning. Uh, if you're too far back and you start throwing them, uh, death is not going to get stun locked. So you have to walk pretty close to the edge over here. You know, when I first started doing it, I would walk off a lot. But you, you practice it and you get used to it. You throw two holy waters and then you just alternate between throwing a holy water and jump whipping. Throw two holy waters and then just alternate. Um, if you're too far back on the first one, you still have time to move up and catch it. But you want to get used to just walking into the right spot. And you have a pretty big area. It's probably from about here until you fall off that you can go. Anything further back to the left though is not going to work. So I'm pretty far back right now. This is probably as far back as you can do it. And I mean that's the death fight. It's it's uh, pretty simple once you get once you know the strat. And there's a slightly faster fight that you can do, but I don't even go for it, so I'm not gonna teach you guys. Uh, but if you would like to look it up, uh, definitely I believe everyone in like the top ten does it. Uh, I think I'm currently ranked 23rd on the list. Alright, so here we're on the final level. And here we are on the infamous Bridge of Bats. The Bridge of Lames. go back and talk about what we just did that was that was the strategy in full time so these bats are a real pain in the butt until you know you can manipulate them first one you just want to whip and jump and whip he's he's out of the way simple jump and whip the second one there's two methods of doing this uh, the easy way is to jump and throw a holy water and then just jump jump jump
the uh, the actual way to do it so you don't waste a heart is to once you land you walk a little bit and then jump and then keep on jumping this middle bat can be a real pain sometimes even if you're doing the right thing so what you, uh, if he does swoop at you like that, you want to use your stopwatch and uh, stop him. So walk a little bit, one, two, and go. Then jump whip, get that, hit the bat. Here on this next bat, you want to jump immediately upon landing. That's probably the easiest one, right? You just jump immediately upon landing. He's coming for me. Uh, so jump again, jump, jump. Now this bat, this is Dave the bat, uh, named by aptly named by Indy Sweet. Um, Dave the bat can be a real butthole. It costs everybody a few seconds every now and again. But uh, I've kind of come to realize if you jump immediately upon landing and whip Dave, <clears throat> uh, usually Dave will not mess with you. So as soon as we land. We're gonna jump and whip again and now if you remember in the very beginning of the tutorial I told you guys there was one more door you needed to jump through and this is it uh, you want to jump as soon as you get to the bushes in the background or the you know the the vines growing up the castle there you want to jump into that doorway Alright, so save it right here. Now when you come through here, this skeleton's not going to do anything unless he's do he's based off of your movements. So you can walk against the door here, bring him up here with you, whip him, and then you're good to go. Make sure you don't walk too far to the left here because what's going to happen, you're going to spawn a flea rider and they're going to start going ham. And you don't want that to happen. So uh, come up here and just hold up basically and you'll hit the stairs as soon as possible. And there you go. Now you can't. The real way to get through here, that's the easy way, is to do a damage boost uh, and just go. Okay, same thing with this room. You can either choose to walk against the wall and bring him over to kill him, and then just go across, you know, safely. Or you can damage boost again. Now here, uh, you're probably going to want to get the meat in the wall. Uh, and if you only have four bars left at this point, you definitely got to get the meat in the wall. Get that. Let's take another look at that. So what you do is you use the stopwatch when you're close to being down, whip to kill the skeleton or the uh, flea man and then just get the meat, you whip twice and go. Now here uh, there's a couple methods of doing this, this is the real method. Basically as soon as you come down the stairs you want to jump off and use your stopwatch. You kind of want to use your stopwatch close to the ground so you don't get the crouch animation. Now I do a safety whip. Uh, it's not necessary, but personally I sometimes get a flea rider uh, that spawns from the left side of the screen instead of the right side of the screen. And uh, if he takes away four bars of my health, that's pretty bad. So I don't want that to happen. So that's why you see me get up here, crouch, and, and do a whip like that. 
but you don't have to do it if you find that you, you're not getting that left-handed uh, flea rider sometimes. Now, let me show you a backup method. Let's say you got to this point, but you don't have the stopwatch to make this room easy. Well, there's a backup strategy you can do. Get down here, turn around, and just wait. Now that's going to boost you, now you go. And then you just kind of have to dodge the flea riders. Sometimes a flea man can jump and hit you like that, and that is not good. Um, but at least you got through there. Now, if you get here with two bars of health, just go ahead and jump off and refill. And do what you can with Dracula as a beginner. What I would do if I got there with two bars of health is just go for it. Alright, so let's save it. Okay, because it all starts right here. Once you enter this door, any frames you drop... Uh, is going to mess up the Dracula manipulation. Let's just go up here and take a look without I'm, in, I'm gonna be stopping it on purpose so we get random manipulation RNG and There's no telling what RNG I'm gonna get here See, and this is why you don't want the random RNG, right? Because, I mean, Dracula, I mean, I think there are some people that have a better understanding about where he could spawn and stuff. I know my buddy Yogi the Monk, uh, you know, he, he kind of figured it out when he was running the game for a little while. Um, but, uh, you know, if you don't know where Dracula is going to spawn at, he can spawn right on top of you and cost you your run. And that is bad because this is the last part of the game and you don't want that to happen. So we'll go back and take a look at uh, what we want to do to get the same manipulation each time. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but... So like I said, it all starts here. You can do whatever you want here. Like get this, get this big heart, you know, get your extra five hearts if you need it. But once you enter this next room, um, it, you can't, you gotta do a very specific step. Never stop. So what we wanna do is get on the stairs and then here we wanna get the cross, jump off, jump, jump whip, jump whip, jump whip. So jump up, get the cross, and make sure you're using the jump whip movement like we discussed so you're not dropping frames. And keep going until the screen centers and the fight is, you know, essentially triggered. So keep going, keep going, keep going. The fight is now triggered. You can turn around and get in position, which for me, I like to stand here, basically at the right end of the uh, casket. And then uh, what I like to do is once Dracula's head uh, reaches the candle, I like to whip three times. One, two, three, and then I jump and throw across. Sometimes you will get hit. That's okay. Oh, we, we got weird manipulation, but uh, luckily, yeah, I made a save state in a bad spot, so... That's why I tell you guys it's important not to uh, make bad save states. When you go to practices, make your save state on that that last door in the yellow room before you enter before the staircase. That way you always have uh, a good chance to start. So here, whip, 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 throw.
Yeah, I'll tell you what. I, w I want to be able to give you guys a good example. So what we're going to do. So we'll go back here and I'll just do the level real quick. I just got through that bridge using all the strats that I taught you guys before. make our safe state here so now once we go you can't stop moving right so just go 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 uh, get the cross jump off get some hearts and hit this candle but leave the other ones so now we can save it Try to get a crit there. It didn't work out. <laughs> Alright, let's explain what's happening. Now that we have the good manipulation, he can still do a couple different patterns on the first two uh, phases or cycles that he has, but on the third cycle, if you get the right manipulation, Dracula will always be on the left side of the screen. That's going to enable us to throw two crosses at him and get some really nice damage. So. Let's take a look at that. Uh, so once he hits the candle, whip, 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 jump and throw a cross. And even without a crit, this is going to probably give you an easy five cycle. But five cycles, not bad. Not bad at all, right? Uh, something to note is uh, when you do throw your cross here, you kind of want to throw it on the way down, not too far down, but on the way down from the pinnacle of your jump. That way you're hitting Dracula in the neck, and that's going to give you the double hit. That's the easy five cycle. One, two, three, jump, throw. So after the second cycle, excuse me, didn't mean to do that. This is the second cycle. Once we do this part, you want to start walking back to the right, and then you'll you'll get used to the timing. But uh, so we're going to walk back to the right, and then we're going to go back and start throwing crosses. Now I goofed up a little bit because I paused it in there, but let's do it right. And now you guys know after the second cycle, I'm going to be turning to the right, and then I'm going to start throwing crosses. So first cycle. Turn and go. Now you want to jump over Dracula's fireball, and you want to pick up the holy water first, and then pick up the multiplier.
First cycle. Second cycle, start heading back to the right. Now throw. And there's the sixth cycle. Since I went for the crit and missed it, it actually cost me a cycle. Um, let's just try to get a crit to show you guys what it looks like. That was close. Yeah, let's just worry. Let's just try to get a crit. We're not worried about everything else right now. What I like to do when I'm trying to get a crit is you'll see me. I'll do like a kind of a turn, just like we did for the bat skip, and then I'll I'll turn back and jump and whip. That's kind of like a timing thing. Um, unless I'm unless I got the second cycle set up, then it's just a jump and a jump. But let's see. So first cycle. Let's see if we can pop his head off here. No, it was really close though. There we go, there's a crit. Uh, it's actually, that's, that's like really tough to get. So you guys, don't worry about getting a crit on Dracula at first. Uh, just worry about getting your number of cycles down. Uh, if you're doing 10, 15 cycle Draculas, uh, they're going to be pretty slow. Like. Now there's plenty of time to go in here and jump and then to get two uh, hits per cycle like this. So now we're on the cookie monster. Um, well first of all Dracula, once you get used to the game and once you run it, Dracula is going to be the thing you probably practice the most with Flea Man Alley being second and then probably Cave Skip and Bat Crit being third. Uh, tied for third but Dracula is probably where you're gonna put so much time in because even if you have a very clean run and you get here you know you, let's say you even did back crit and you got cave skip all in one run uh, and you get here and you have a 15 cycle or 10 cycle 12 cycle Dracula it's gonna hurt pretty bad so you know like I said Make your save state at that last yellow room before getting to the staircase or you're never going to be able to get the good manipulation because you've already messed it up. So now let's talk about Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster is very easy, uh, especially if you have enough holy waters and you got a, at least a two multiplier, which we do. So what we're going to do is just hit him a few times, let him jump, catch him on the crouch like that, and then just lock him. That's what I like to refer to as the Cookie Monster Squat. And that's the end of the game, but let's check it out again.
Easy peasy. Now, what if you say, oh no, Aphonic, I missed my multiplier. I only have one holy water to throw at a time. Uh, I'm not going to make it. Yeah, it's still pretty easy, guys. Let's, let's try to get an example of that. Even though I got a two, you'll see. I'll, I'll get the holy water in there. See, that's what happens when you go too early. I went too early that time and ruined it, but it's all good. We'll just take him out. See if I can get a crit. I like it when he's on the left-hand side. save it here because uh, we're going to be done discussing Dracula but if you guys want to go back uh, it's right there just watch it several times make your proper save state uh, now once you once you go through and do the manipulation and once you center the room and trigger the fight and you see Dracula's head that you can make a new save state there and practice from there like once you go all the way to the left and then come back to the right to the end of the casket uh, that's when you can make a new safe state, but be sure you have the good manipulation uh, You know, what I mean try it out a few times before you even make a new one So but um, let's discuss this cookie monster backup strat Basically, you're just gonna take it easy You can try to squeeze in three hits per holy water Just back up a little bit You can walk through them just like the knights to get out of the corner. And there you go. Oh, I thought we saved it. Oh well. Nice four cycle there. Alright, but here we go again. Uh, we're not going to use the multiplier. We're only going to use one holy water at a time. Something else to note here. Uh, if you get in trouble, you can crouch near him, and he'll always do the big jump over you. Well, maybe not always, but <laughs> it definitely works. I think it's more so for when you're in the corner. Let's try to get him over here. Well, he doesn't want to cooperate, but uh, it is very useful. It has saved me a couple of times. If you're too far away, that's when he does the fireball shots. So it might not be 100% of the time that it works. It might be a little tricky as to where you're standing or where you're crouching. I was super close that time.
Cookie Monster, you'll get really used to, and like, he normally won't ever kill you, like. Do one more fight with one holy water. Try to squeeze in three whips. Now you see him going into the jump animation? You need to move. That's when you know you need to move. Throw a holy water and get out of there. Go ahead and walk through him since we we're kind of getting in the corner there. That's basically Castlevania speedrunning in a nutshell for beginners. Uh, I know I didn't have great efficiency with some of the tricks, especially the, the bat skip, right? We got off to a shaky start. <laughs> but but um, if you watch this guide, it is long, it is lengthy, but I wanted to be in depth. Like I said, I wanted to give you guys um, actual examples of of things that could go wrong, what to do, backup strats, some of the easier strats, some of the harder strats you can learn later. Um, and uh, I hope this has helped you guys. Uh, like, uh, you know, try to find the parts that you need the most. Maybe you need the whole game. Maybe you only need level three, or maybe you need the death part. You know, look at them, make your save states, and drill it, you know? Uh, some players. Some players don't need to drill uh, stuff as hard as others. There's absolutely nothing wrong with hard work, guys. So don't be afraid to drill. Let's just go up here and see if we can get the bat skip. Do I just have bad luck today? Nah. Nah. It's easy, man. It's easy, guys. See, I told you. It's easy, fellers and gals. Boom, boom. And that is a level one with a backup bat fight. It's, you know, everything you just saw, you learned already. And now when you watch people speed run it, you'll be seeing a lot of these same things. There are a couple more tricks that I didn't go through. I did not go through because they're a little more, you know, in depth and, and have some difficulties. Uh, you know, they're, they're like... If you're running for world record, you need to do them, but otherwise they're probably just going to waste a ton of your time. Uh, for instance, the, uh, there's a stopwatch trick on the very like first two screens. And, uh, you know, nobody's trying to do that unless, like I said, you're going for a really like top 10 or... Maybe you're going for world record or whatever it is, you know, but otherwise just starting out We do not need to worry about those at all But yeah guys that is going to be the the tutorial for beginning uh, Castlevania speedrunning uh, It's gonna there's a lot of information in there for you guys to, to suck in and, and, and be in sponge mode, right? so Break it down, learn it in parts. Don't go through and like try to do it all at once. Get get your stage one good, your level one good, then get your level two good, you know. And then once you get to Dracula, you know, practice, practice, practice Dracula. I can't uh, iterate that enough. Uh, but that is gonna do it, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, 
Um, thanks for uh, supporting my stream on Twitch and uh, watching my content that I provide on YouTube, whether it be retro stuff or Path of Exile stuff. Um, I do appreciate it very much. I like to uh, give a shout out to uh, Cantaloupe Me. Uh, Cantaloupe Me actually made a beginner's tutorial that I watched when I first started running uh, Castlevania. And that's what got me some basic knowledge and, and got me going. So thanks to that guy for making that tutorial. Um, also shout out to um, some of my mods. Chaos Factor, The Big Mike 1983. Uh, the Shinny Megami, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of you guys, and then some of the big time supporters of my stream, like Maximum 350, Crab Cakes, uh, Brian, uh, Slick Body, uh, just so many people, so many people. Uh, none of this is possible without you guys, so I really appreciate it. And if you're from YouTube and uh, you like this video, you know, you like my my sultry voice and hanging out. Uh, come to my stream and hang out on Twitch. I uh, stream Monday through set of Fridays and then Sundays I'm on a channel called Retro Gaming Live TV with shout outs to the homie Toad22484, Enemy TV, uh, Anthole, LRock617, uh, Cypherin, so many pe great people over there. If I didn't say your name that doesn't mean I don't appreciate you. But um, yeah, just a ton of great people in the retro community on Twitch. So, uh, you know, come by and hang out. And that's going to be it, guys. I will catch you on the next video. Be on the lookout for some, as far as retro goes, I'm releasing more Just Game series uh, videos, which is just gameplay with no commentary for you guys who need um, uh, gameplay footage for your own videos, you know? You can feel free to use them. Just, you know, give credit where credit is due. Anyways, I'm out of here, guys. You have a good one. I'll catch you soon. Peace.